Going through all of that, I want to bring it now to help us really break it down. QI Research CEO, Chief Strategist Daniel DiMartino Booth, Economic Cycle Research Institute co-founder, Lakshman Akatan. All right, uh, Daniel, let me just start with you. So we've got the bear steepener gone. I'm, I'm glad Madison explained it because there are two ways you uninvert the mm -hmm. yield curve. Yep. Uh, and this ain't the right way. <laughs> Although, I guess it goes with the, the higher for longer theme we're hearing. It does. And in fact, we've seen a little bit of reinversion of the yield curve in the last day and a half of, of trading. And I think that that reflects higher for longer. So we're not going to come flying out like we normally do. When Normally when we see the, the curve uninvert, it's violent. But we've actually seen a little bit of stabilization right. here. And I think that that is also reflected in the minutes by them saying financial conditions appear to be tighter. So, uh, which is what the the ultimate goal? That is the ultimate goal. All right, at least they're admitting it. I, it the business cycle. It yeah. used to be kind of simple. <laughs> really? I think so. I, mean, I don't envy was, him. I do not envy I, I, him. Listen, I, but that's what I'm saying. It feels like your job is impossible because yeah. the Fed's taking on this outside role. I mean, yeah. we never had 33 trillion in dollars in debt. Now they're oh on this. Gosh. I mean, things are going on. How do you? How do you even begin to assess the business cycle? And just layer on there a pandemic with all kinds of freak there outs you go. on yeah. top of that. So very complicated. But um, to the point of, of the lead in here, the market is doing some of the work for the Fed, right? It's raising the rates up. But what it's so belated, right? The Fed has been saying for a while, higher for longer, and the market didn't want to believe it. You, for example, today's PPI number, uh, again, it's hotter than expected. We've got a few months now of the PPI going sideways, not down. The script is that it's going down, right. and it's not. It's going sideways, and that's very much in line with the forward-looking data on inflation, which has gone down and then gone sideways for since early this year. Forward-looking leading indicators, not PPI, not CPI, but things that anticipate their direction are going sideways. So that's, again, higher for longer, tighter credit conditions, whatever you want to call it, it's more expensive. Mm -hmm. Tim, where does that put the Fed, though? I mean, if, if, the, if the bond market is doing some of the work for them, I mean, I'm reading between the lines from what Jefferson said, Lori Logan has said, and some of these others, it feels like they don't at least, listen, I can deal with higher for longer if they don't have to keep hiking rates. Well, you may be able to deal with higher <laughs> for longer, but a lot of companies are sure, going to have a yeah. very hard time with sure. that. And we have to understand right now that margins are coming under pressure at the same time that, that, that consumers are losing buying power and yet companies' cost of finance is going up. Mm -hmm. these, are, these are levers moving in the wrong direction. You're starting to see financials go through a third round of layoffs and they see what's coming in 2024, which is, gee, it was a problem for commercial real estate that was isolated in 2023. Oh boy, we've got to refinance corporate bonds right. in 2024. PNC uh, announcing a, a large yes, chunk yes, of uh, they're laying off a lot of chunk a lot mm -hmm. large chunk of people. With that in mind, though, uh, what's the time? We're, we're the maturity wall that's coming up, mm -hmm. and some of these other things. How much time is there before the economy would maybe need or desperately scream out for rate cuts? Ooh. Well, the, the economy just going on its own. It could take a while. Could take uh, several really? more months. Well, you see, business managers. Um, we're real, they're hoarding labor, right? They had a really tough time hiring people back. They're very reticent to let people go. Look, the t if you're a temp worker, you're, go you're, you're getting cut. If, if you want a lot of hours, you don't get a lot of hours. They're right. pulling those levers down. But actual outright firing, uh, several months of that, it could take But when you a start getting while. this uh, refinancing at significantly higher exactly. levels, and the margins like get yeah. squeezed. Yeah. So and, then and, and Goldman Sachs put out that seminal report last week that showed that just under 50% of U.S. companies uh, are not profitable. Right. That's really I used hard. That that's a hard in the show. environment. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. It, and it's, it's obviously it's it's. I remember. I know a biotech company has been around for 30 years, and every 10 years they change what their business model is, mm -hmm. but they always raise money. The CEO always makes a seven-figure mm -hmm. salary. It's kind of embarrassing to be honest with you. So, so how do you how are you mapping this out then? What are you telling your clients? Well, the credit contraction is not over. Uh, it's we just think beginning, it, right? It's just beginning. I mean, we saw a little blip of it earlier. If something starts to break, I think the Fed kind of goes in and sticks his finger in the wall and tries to hold it back. Is that the only? But you thing? can't do that for the whole, whole economy. Is that then that the only way they can assess this? I mean, is is it? As much as we hear soft landing, and Neil Kashkari mentioned it yesterday, right. yeah. is the only way the Fed knows how to assess when to stop is when there's a lot of rubble on the ground. I, well, unfortunately. I mean, I mean, Jay Powell's used the word pain over and over again, and I think we're seeing pain coming out, Charles. So I don't, I don't think that if it's a soft landing, it's going to be mighty bumpy. 
Uh, and, and that's what corporate America is starting to tell us. But look, nothing is really broken. And we've got bankruptcies running for large companies at the fastest pace since 2010. But still, there's no contagion yet. Hmm. Yeah, and, and they're not forward-looking, right? They, self-admittedly, they said, okay, we gave up on forecasting. Mm -hmm. We're just going to sit here and wait right. and watch. They're going to need to see inflation falling, so, and it's going to so, so they're waiting on data that's already dated. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, and, and then they're, on top of that, the lag effect may come in. 100%. It's like the FOMC minutes. Like, be, there was a time when we would have started the show with that. Right? But 100%. It feels like between the last meeting and now, things changed so much. It's been a dog Why even year. go back to the minutes? Yeah, well... One of the things that we should pay attention to in the minutes, though, as we're sitting here talking about the potential for a pause, is that all committee members were on board with the, the Fed continuing to shrink its balance sheet. Now, mm -hmm. that is problematic for corporate America. Maybe not so for U.S. households, but definitely for corporate America, that that liquidity constraint continues to get tighter and tighter. And very tough on the Treasury, because um, right now, uh, lo and behold, on the, on the side, federal tax receipts are falling the they're way they fall. they're they're in free fall and you don't see that unless you're around a recession that's right. that's what you're seeing there right. so the government's going to need money. In the meantime, no, the already... budget's not falling, right? I mean, yeah. we're going to get a new no, speaker. So... If it's Galise, he's okay with a CR. He's okay with more spending. I mean, listen, uh, you know, and, and, and before we're running out of time, I, I want to mm. get your thoughts on the uh, bond auction today. Mm. Uh, dealers had to eat a whole bunch of that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. They don't like eating it. That's not a, that's, is that a red flag? There is a lot of uncertainty in the dealer community. There are only so many life insurance companies, public pensions, and U.S. households that are going to absorb right. this tremendous supply. Right. I mean, we do need to watch this very closely. China out, Japan out, uh, maybe, you know, with the, the taking off the yield curve, uh, the Fed out of the game, you know, rolling off. Who buys our who buys our debt? Somebody who gets a higher yield. I mean, that's what you're going to that's this is a free market economy. And that's what's going to happen in the end. The real problem, the real fly in the ointment is that inflation is not going according to script it's sticking around right, right. and that's the problem well, yeah, and to your point though we never had anything like this before but, but throw Charles, all the models out the window we do get california federal income taxes on monday so we're going to get some revenue we'll get some cash all right <laughs> we need it daniel uh, danielle lachman thank you both very very much all right folks coming up uh listen if you're working hard uh and you're a married woman uh you you've got you see things changing but Wait till you see some of the similarities going back to 1820. Uh, I, I really want to have all young millennials complaining about household formation. Wait until you learn about true history and where we go from here. Hadley Heath Manning on that. Also, uh, there's a lot of factors, of course, in this market. But I got to tell you something. When you look at the world, how unsafe it is, maybe you want to stick to American companies. Scott Martin has more. Next.